Hi, everyone. So I'm with Kim Smith today, and we're going to talk about self-publishing because she has self-published several books, and I wanted her to share some of the uh, uh, mindset and the tips around that experience with you all. Kim, great to have you here. Hi, George. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. So I'll just share a bit about your background and then we'll, we'll get into the conversation. So you have a master's in, uh, degree in human development. You've worked in the helping professions. Um, and then you, uh, you, you self-published a memoir. And the way that the readers just responded to your book, which is a you know, combination of inspirational stories and transformational habits. Um, and you've collaborated with multiple coaches and creatives and and uh, published a high vibe book series called the unbelievable freedom habit guides and your brand is called unbelievable freedom and invites readers to explore and expand freedom in their own lives so one of the things you talk about with regards to self-publishing is um, that books are kind of like participating in magic so what do you mean by that well, I'm a believer in magic and an enjoyer of magic. And I think it is really, um, my husband and I had a big uh, health transformation. We had a significant weight gain and then we had a significant weight loss. And that's what led to the book. We had a kind of an online community that was supporting us during the weight loss. And they asked for the book. They said, you know, put down how all this, how all this happened. And um, and then it was putting the book into um, print and, and self-publishing it, which we did with relative ease. I know you have also been involved with publishing. Um, that made me say, wow, you can, you can put your story out there and let it travel as it will. So it went around the world and people in Australia and Europe read it. And um, we ended up selling the rights to that book uh, to a traditional publishing house in South Korea. So the book is in the Korean language. And uh, it just showed me that um, when you have this willingness to step up and take action and put something out there, the universe will kind of co-create with you in terms of finding the people who need to hear it and uh, uh, move, it, move it through the world in a magical way. That's really, that's, that's inspiring. So um, tell us a bit about how you did get the book out there because I know that there are people who are watching this who some people are watching this maybe may have self-published their own books uh, and some are thinking about it but of course getting the word out is one of the challenging aspects of it what 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 did you do that I'm sure you did multiple things but was there something you did that you found particularly helpful yeah well we we kind of had a very organic and non-strategic experience where we started this Facebook community mostly just to share our story and share support and encouragement. And then because we had these thousands of people around us, we already had an audience for the book with no intention. I now understand that that's one way to build an audience for a book is to start a community first, but we did it not, not really understanding that we were doing a, a good job of um, being prepared for a launch. So we put the book out, sold several hundred copies in a matter of a couple of weeks. And um, I was hooked on the idea that creating content would be a great way to have a business. So I left my job and spent several months just promoting that first book. Then I wrote a second book and then I began the collaborations with others. Wow. So that's so you, you really put in the work of creating a free Facebook group first. And uh, yeah, and, and that, that's amazing. That, that does take a lot of work because, you know, it's, it's passion. It's, it was a labor of love. Um, I typically recommend to, uh, to my own clients, well, you know, Facebook group is one way, but I say, well, Facebook ads is another way. And so I really, I, I, I've been recommending people like build, use Facebook ads, build a, build a business page audience, and then kind of go from there. But Facebook groups, sure, as, as well, one who is willing to do the work can, mm -hmm. can certainly get really far with it. Um, so uh, one of the things, I mean, you, you really got into your own book because of your own story. And, um, you know, a lot of people, well, I mean, your, your story is, you know, quite dramatic, right? You got this, there's a story arc to it, but you also believe that it doesn't have to be dramatic, doesn't have to be traumatic, uh, one's personal story um, to deserve writing a book. Is that right? I think it's, 
you know, one of the things that's happened to me as I'm, the business is sort of just evolving and, and I'm evolving with it is that people feel called to different things. There's people who always wanted to dance or they always wanted to make art. And then there are people who just always wanted uh, to write a book and that doesn't necessarily need to be memoir or sharing their personal story, but there are people who really want to. And I think when that desire is in you to share your story, it's because someone needs it. I feel the universe is putting that desire into the person for the, the someone out there that needs it. And so, um, yeah, your story doesn't have to be, in fact, my story, although it has a dramatic aspect because of physical transformation is a dramatic thing to see side by side pictures. Um, it doesn't have, I always say there was no train wreck. There was no big traumatic moment. There was just a quiet struggle that led to a big weight gain. And there was, you know, some spiritual inner work that went on to, to get ready to surrender the weight struggle. Um, but it wasn't, a, it's not dramatic. It's like, I think I refer to it as a th thousand tiny tragedies in terms of, of what went on. So don't judge your story as not worthy, but just ask yourself when you're putting it out there, what are you, what are you hoping to accomplish? A, a self-published book is not a get rich quick scheme. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of um, showing up for that story and putting your energy behind it and being willing to tell it over and over again. In fact, I was so excited to talk this opportunity to talk with you because this isn't a weight loss podcast. And I've been on many of those and simply told my story through the lens of what did I do to change my physical size and shape and, and health. And now I prefer to tell um, all of the rest of the creative parts of this. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, this is great. I mean, because you, you do have multiple facets of the story that are, that are um, inspiring and, and useful to others. So, um, so when you were writing the book, I mean, of course it was a labor of love. It was a response to your audience saying, please tell us the story more, more of the story. Um, so you were thinking of, you weren't thinking about it as a get rich quick scheme. And, and I think that is one of the mistakes that people who haven't yet published a book uh, may have this fantasy idea that yes, a book is what makes me rich and famous. Um, and, and then they go through the, <laughs> the publishing process. Usually we, we can't get a traditional major publisher right away. Right. Usually we have to self-publish or, yeah, there are those hybrid um, publishers. Well, actually, you you are uh, you have have uh, had that right now. You're not at this very, very moment. You're not taking clients for that. But there are publishers that, that can work with you on that. So. Um, so, yes, the purpose of a book is not is not to make money. Right. I think that. You know, I'm, this is, I'm fairly new to this. It's been over the past year that I've worked with, I call them collaborators. Really, I've, I've connected with several friends and colleagues who do coaching, who have their own message that they wanted to get into a book um, and wanted to kind of follow the format. I, I did my own workbook first. Uh, it actually was a motivational email series that I was selling as a subscription to motivational emails. And I just bound them into a book shot it out there into the world and it did pretty well. And so I thought, well, that was fun. I want to do that again. And I needed more content. So I worked with those authors really kind of like a traditional publisher on a work for hire basis. They brought me the content. We packaged it up. We put it out there and created the Unbelievable Freedom Habit Guide series, which is a series of workbooks. Um, but in terms of going forward, I'm really understanding that there's a book is an asset and you can do that as a status piece or a, or a tool in your toolkit to have something to give away at conferences. Um, that's a fine motivation to me, but if you don't love this book and you aren't going to show up for the book and talk about it, it's going to be de-energized. And I know that because I wrote a couple other workbooks in my series that they just weren't special enough for me to keep showing up for them. And so they just fizzled and I'm great. And people in my audience love me. But if I don't care about the book, they're not going to care about the book. So don't write a book and then just think it's going to go participate in magic on its own. It's like a continual co-creation. Yeah. So the workbook uh, that you put together and that you've been helping others put together, tell us about that a bit. So um, you call them habit guides. Is that right? Call them habit guides. And there's, you know, all sorts of branding conversations going on. I'd love to know what you think about it. But some people love workbooks. 
Some people hate workbooks. You can never please everyone, but I've, I'm really trying to think as I go forward about what kind of energy I want these books to have. I, I pictured them as um, they're breezy and brief. You know, they're for people who say things like, I don't read, or I don't have time to read, or I don't have time to work on myself. I really wanted them to be inviting for those people that have those blocks about, I don't do self-improvement. Um, they're not heavy on content. They're 70 to 90 pages. Every other page is blank to give dot grid for notes and reflections. So they're meant to be written in. And they just introduce the author's story in a kind of brief little hook, get the emotional involvement of the reader, and then they just teach a framework of habits. They're not meant to ever be, like, I have one on emotional freedom technique. I, a coach that I know who teaches that just did a little workbook with tapping scripts. Nobody's pretending one workbook is going to be everything for you to develop that as a life-changing practice, but it's an introduction. It's just to kind of break the seal, move people into action. And then when they take that step, if it resonates, they'll go seek out more books, a coach, a program. So they're meant to, they're meant to introduce self-improvement topics in a really um, accessible way. And then hopefully people will go beyond that. I really like, so, so essentially you're, you're helping a coach or a teacher to break down their framework into really bite-sized, actionable steps that the reader can go, okay, that's very doable. Let me try this, take some notes, and then go to the next step. Yeah, yes. that's really yep. nice. That's the, that's the format. And so what, I, what my dream was, because I'm a big dreamer, um, was to create a brand in Unbelievable Freedom that is as recognizable as like Chicken Soup for the Soul, as recognizable as that for dummies series remember for dummies how popular those were and i wanted to think that people would say oh i want to learn about plant-based eating or oh i want to learn about you know um astrology i'm going to go to the unbelievable freedom habit guides and find someone out there who practiced a new habit shared their story and like invited me into it because that's really what happened with our original book was we just shared our story and a little bit of our habits and people showed up in droves wanting coaching and we weren't coaches. We were like, what do we do now? <laughs> wow, that's, that's awesome. You know, I wanna share on my screen a um, couple of things. One is I wanna share uh, the book page on Amazon. And this is, this is a legit, <laughs> this is a legit book. I mean, you got 404 ratings. That is not easy, <laughs> I would tell wow. you. It is not easy at all. Um, it's been only, quote unquote, only two years, you know, and 404. I have, you know, I did, a, I, I did obviously a, a book launch for my own, for my own book. Uh, the, first, the first book, I did more of a launch and I had, you know, over a dozen uh, blurbs from different colleagues, et cetera. And I had a whole sort of volunteer team of people who said, oh, I'm all right, reviews, blah, blah, blah. And I was able to get like, maybe 30, 40 reviews. Um, and that work, that took a lot of hard work. People don't realize how hard it is to get someone to review you on Amazon. I mean, it is really hard. Okay. Just don't, oh yeah, it's easy to review. No, no, it's not. It's, it's even getting one review on Amazon is hard. And so getting, for me, getting 40 was a big, big deal. And you have 400. So, so it's, it's really amazing. Now, anything you want to say about how that happened? Well, that is a testimony to what was going on at the time. And that is, I had started the Facebook community. I, I had been part of a larger Facebook community when I was in the initial part of our weight loss journey. And I kind of stood out as someone who loved to show up and make a lot of posts. And then when I created my own group, I became kind of um, enamored of, um, going live. So I was live in my group a lot. And I think people just came to this point of feeling like, you know, they, they knew, like, and trusted me again. I wasn't an online entrepreneur. I didn't understand any strategy around what it is that you do to create, um, you know, uh, trust with people or, or have increased their willingness to, um, engage with you, but it, it happened organically. And uh, I, I think you probably can tell I have like a big um, passion for this. This is really related to my grandmother's legacy. It was my grandmother's um, death when she was 95. 
on her deathbed, in essence, in her final months of life, she was just imploring me to enjoy my life. And I was really, really struggling. My, my weight problem was only a manifestation of just a really um, broken spirit. And I had been through some career failures and some other personal tribulations. And I really felt and feel that in honor of my grandmother, I need to um, enjoy my life. So, you know, in doing my own podcast, which is a very stripped down, raw and real confessional style, um, Unbelievable Freedom with Kim Smith is my podcast. And, and I, I close every episode saying, enjoy your life. I'm, that's how my grandmother would close a conversation with me. And she gave me so much permission in just saying that to start creating the same kind of changes that I'm trying to invite readers into, which is it, you don't have to like meditation. You don't have to like yoga. You don't have, but you are allowed to try things and explore things and see what's going to help you enjoy your life. And so um, I think people felt that passion from me. And uh, those early months with the books were just a complete, we were featured in a Korean documentary. It aired on a Saturday night at the equivalent of NBC in Korea, Seoul Broadcast Services. And on Monday morning, we got two offers for the Korean rights. We were like, they were like, are your Korean rights of your book still available? We were like, this is just self-published. We don't have an agent. We don't have a publishing house. We don't have any of those things. So it's been um, really exciting. And it comes back to that participating in magic, which is uh, just do things open-heartedly. Now I'm, I'm learning that I've made some mistakes. I've left money on the table, but I've, I truly do things um, with a lot of love and I'm willing to take the, take the good with the bad in terms of the things I've done wrong. Well, I think if you were going to err on any side, err, err on the side of doing it with love and generosity. I think uh, at the, well, when, when you are your grandmother's age, you will say, well, those so-called mistakes uh, you know, it, it was probably okay. <laughs> you know, it's probably something you could look at, you could be proud of and look back on. And I think when I came to follow you, I don't know how that happened. It's possible you are running really great ads at Instagram, probably. Yeah, Instagram. <laughs> in I know that's how we. Me, <laughs> people like people like me who are looking for people like you. But it, I think the post that I first engaged upon um, was you talking about this idea of resisting showing up for your creativity and waiting to be spirit led to everything, which is a lot of what I do through the world. I might be out in the forest and get an inspiration and run back and work. And I'm trying to lean into what you were saying, which is blocking off time and trusting that creativity will meet me there. Yeah. So that, that you saying that is proof of how you can, you can make a piece of content, you can put something out there. And when it just really speaks to somebody in a way, I'm like, I'll follow him off a cliff. No, no, no. But I'll, I'll be loved to be interviewed by him. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think your creativity is certainly, I mean, you, you've, you've figured out a way to, 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 to stay in creativity because look, you've got these books here uh, on fasting. I guess that's another, we haven't even, you know, touched that at all, but this is very fascinating. And then you've got, um, you've got a series of books with, uh, you know, these this, the collaborations with other people. Uh, these are the different uh, habit guides, workbooks, and um, look at this. I mean, there's a lot of different. This is the uh, EFT tapping one, mm -hmm, probably, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, uh, poster girl. <laughs> yeah, that's something. That's your Instagram. Yeah, tell 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 us about that. So after I wrote my uh, my first workbook was on fasting. Fasting was a big part of the practices that helped us change our okay. weight and physical oh. health. Yeah. And I bound together those 31 motivational emails that were for. Um, helping people acclimate to their fasting practice. And then it was so fun to make that workbook. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just want to make another one. And I was like, what other kind of content do I have to share with the world? And I was right. like, I'm going to put my contentment practices into a book. And it's like things like collecting easy delights, which is like, you know, looking for bumblebees asleep inside flowers. It's very oh. whimsical. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, it's very much another side of me. Yeah. Uh, wow. It's great. Well, there's there's a lot of goodness to explore here. It's so much fun, um, and so so let's kind of complete by talking about creativity. You know, this this process, and um, I mean, yes, we are all on this journey of finding a better ways uh, to to be creative. But um, yeah, I, so 
people who some people watching watching us may go well you guys are different kinds of people you guys are naturally creative <laughs> right i can tell you that i i fought writing for most of my life so i know that that you know now i write regularly so it wasn't it wasn't natural for me for most of my life but really most of my life but but tell what what are your thoughts on this i mean how how can we break the barrier well get more freedom i guess with our yeah, creativity yeah yeah i think that what happened for me and the reason fasting i've moved away from my weight loss influencer persona or the the kind of accidental branding that was coming over me when i shared my weight story so publicly but it was also in the fasting and which is still something i do every day i have a time restricted eating window it was during my fasted times of the day that I became much more spiritually awakened and had this idea that um, these ideas that I've always had, I've always had ideas, were worthy of speaking out into the world, putting down on paper, writing in a journal. It, it's not that the creative impulses weren't with me during those years that I describe as myself as having been stuck in a mire, um, but I didn't, I didn't have a mindset that my impulses were worthy of exploration. I thought, if you're not an artist, you don't do art. And if you're not a writer, you don't write. I was working in a hospital job. Um, I do have a master's degree in human development, but I had burned out on a mental health career and kind of um, retreated to my good typing skills to do like a medical transcription scribe type job. And so I would thought, why would I be writing? And it was the weight loss journey. Suddenly I was microblogging in these Facebook communities. Every day I was showing up and writing and sharing my thoughts and feelings and perspectives. And people were responding to my writing and saying, oh, the way you said that made me think differently. The way you said that made me feel differently. And I was like, oh my goodness, maybe I'm a writer. So, you know, it's just like I, I dabbled with running when I started taking the weight off. I don't run anymore, but I started to realize, you know, people who run are runners. It's not about marathons and you just, you do something if you decide that you want to do it and you don't put these um, parameters on yourself where you say, this person's creative and this person isn't. I'm now of the mind that if you're working on your own personal development, that is a creative process. If you're working on yourself, you are your own creation, even if you don't journal, even if you don't do art. Um, and I think creativity is for everyone. It's a way to enjoy life, which is what my grandmother wanted. Yeah, it's beautiful. I want to show everyone on screen uh, just your podcast page. Uh, well, this is the Apple the Apple page for your podcast. Mm -hmm. Got thirty two reviews already. Congratulations! And that's Thank also you. that's also very hard to get. A single podcast review is very hard to get. Also, um, and uh, it's beautiful. I mean, you're going into season two now, so some really uh, inspiring things. Um, I look forward to checking it it's out a, too. It's very heartfelt. It's very much. Um, my own examination of, uh, I know, I'm sure you're familiar with Gay Hendricks and the upper yes. limit problem. And I am continually watching my own thoughts and seeing how I recreate situations that bring on struggle because it's so familiar and comfortable to me and how I need to watch my thoughts in order to continue moving forward in this journey. Yeah. It's wonderful. Well, is there anything uh, you'd like to share in terms of your any offers? I mean, we talked about your books, your podcast, but anything right um, I, in our in our brief email exchange right now, you're mentioning that you're not available for clients, uh, but that that may, probably will change right in the future. It will I imagine, change. But... I would love for people to connect with me if they have any interest in any of the things that I'm doing, because there will be more books. And so publishing is of interest. I have a new membership community coming that's around guided journaling and getting on Zoom live to do a guided journaling ritual. So um, yeah, find me on social. Everything's at unbelievablefreedom.com. Awesome. Awesome. Kim, great to connect with you. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for the inspiration, the inspirational work that you do, but just also the, 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 the being that you bring forth and the presence that inspires others. Thank you. Thank you so much.